35% of women seeking funding have encountered gender bias from finances. Now that is a staggering statistic and we're going to explore exactly why that is on this episode and how can we fight that? How can we gain back control? How can we get that equal level playing field for both men, women and whatever gender to get access to finance for the businesses that we we yearn for, right? We we go to bed at night and we get up in the morning and we think, I want to make this come to life. I want to make this a reality. And t- guys, if you've been following me for a while, you know that I started a business from scratch with no money. And I'm bringing on the show today a, a an expert in this space who has got so many interesting case studies and stories of the female founders that she's helped. She's using statistics that banks have collated and put together to showcase just how difficult it's been in the past for women to get finance. And we are here to change the story. We are going to change the narrative. This cannot lo- this cannot keep going, right? And if you're with me, then this is the episode to tune into because I'm going to be joined by the most amazing leader in the financial services space that keeps popping up. Everyone keeps saying her name, and that is Roxanne Goodman. She is the founder at Female Founder Finance and is the current managing director at Goodman Corporate. With her 18 years experience in commercial finance, she is on a mission to improve access to female founders, to to improve for access for finance for female founders. Oh, that's in there. Um, so yeah, I cannot wait to bring her on. Roxanne, hello. <laughs> Roxanne, it's so nice to be with you again virtually this time. We yeah. met face to face for the first time earlier in the month where we got to speak at an event together. But please, for those people listening, give us an intro. Who are you and what do you do? Okay, yeah, uh, Roxanne Goodman. I created Female Founder Finance at the start of this year um, with the main aim of promoting access to finance for female entrepreneurs. Um, there, Obviously, I've been working uh, for Goodman Corporate for about the last 18 years. Um, in 2019, um, HM Treasury and NatWest did uh, the Rose Review, um, which highlighted that £250 billion worth of economy could be put back into the UK if women had the same access to finance as men, which just is an astounding amount of money and difference that obviously there is unconscious or conscious gender bias in UK finance industry. Um, So I set about uh, with my co-founder and um, we've created a business that hopefully we can try and uh, rectify at least a small portion of that uh, balance. Honestly, I feel like just handing over the Money Honey podcast to you and be like, take it away, like just go with it because this is exactly what I sta- why I started what I started. And it was, honestly, I just literally bought a mic and I was like, we're just gonna have to do this now. Like, well, let's just get online and do it. Um, I, I don't have anywhere near the amount of research experience that you do. I just know that I needed to create a stage and a platform for people to come and talk about it on here so I thank you deeply for putting your hand up and for agreeing to be a money honey on the show because we need to hear what you have to say thank you yeah I was flattered to be asked as well obviously yeah are you joking so many people nominated you right so uh honestly I was when I said you know uh positive pollination another uh rule that we have or kind of um philosophy here at the money honey is you know if you've been on the show um, nominate someone who else would you love to see on the show who else should come on the show and, and talk about what they have to say and at least three or four people mentioned your name and I was like who is this Roxanne and I started to be honest with you I started to get a little bit nervous about meeting you but <laughs> like she means biz like she's going to be a big deal and you absolutely are a big deal but uh, you, you just don't you just don't have that arrogance with it you're so humble and I just think, yeah, everyone needs to hear what you have to say. So 
why not share some of the really amazing stories, like some of the businesses that you've been helping? Um, I heard about this when we spoke together at Together. So Together Money hosted a women in finance uh, event. We were both speakers there. And you just shared some jaw-dropping stories. Um, take it away. What? Who have you helped? What businesses have you been able to transform? Yeah, so um, we're actively helping female-led businesses at the coalface, um, which which is why we've set up what we're doing to make a difference to the the businesses that need help. Um, so the very first case study that I went out to, um, a client, she'd seen some Facebook social media posts that were just getting going, really local business to me. So it was perfect for me to just go out and sit down with her and have a discussion. Um, she started her business in lockdown. Um, she was working from home. She got a small child. They were quick, quickly grew um, to outgrow the spare bedroom. Needed a unit, needed somewhere to trade from. She was bringing in stock from overseas. Went to ask the bank for an overdraft and the bank said no. So in typical female founder fashion, um, she self-funded using personal credit cards, borrowing from family and friends, using all the personal resources that she had available to her because she didn't know, aside from the bank that she had her account with, there was any other options available to her. And the bank didn't point her in any directions with any kind of advice either. So the first thing that popped into my head when I was sat talking to her was, if you bring in goods in from overseas, why has no one told you about trade finance? If you're selling your products to a distributor, why has no one told you about invoice finance? Why has no one gone through stock? You've got a warehouse full of products here that you could use to secure some working capital. And the conversation just grew and grew and grew. And she is such a lovely lady. And it was so humbling that someone sat and actually listened to the, the advice I was giving. And we got on so well. Um, and she's taken everything on board that I've said, completely transformed their business. And now they're growing at a phenomenal rate. They've had to take on more staff to cope with the, obviously the uptick in the turnover. Um, so yeah, it's such a fantastic case study. And honestly, to be able to hope, help a loop of business to me as well, someone that's so close to our doorstep, just and the community and everything, it just makes it so worthwhile. That is insane. I can't, I like, I have heard this story twice now and I just can't get over it. And this is the power of, you said you met on Facebook? Yeah. Insane. And that, what were you doing on Facebook? Were you actively promoting it? Were you sharing it or was it an accident? Yeah, so I've set up all the company profiles like you do when you're starting out in business on your own. So I'd reserved all the Facebook and Twitter and Instagram um, and I just started doing a little bit like, coming soon this is what we're looking to do if any local businesses in the area that are female owned want to have a discussion brilliant just reach out i'll do whatever i can to help and then yeah she came along through facebook and uh yeah the rest is history and from that she's referred me on to other female business owners in her network that we can help um and it's the same story across um all the social media platforms as well so linkedin's been brilliant for us the professional community and referrals because obviously there is a lot of men in our industry all the men that we've spoken to are massive champions of what we're trying to achieve um, they all understand the journey they all know there is unconscious issues with gender bias in the background and everyone wants to work together to try and level the playing field which is just fantastic because obviously some of the men in commercial finance are very very highly regarded and for them to be able to understand what we're trying to achieve just makes it such an easier conversation as well. Yeah, 100%. I, well, 99% of my clients are men. So, you know, for me, it's, uh, they're my biggest champions. They're the one, they're the ones that, that say yes the quickest. They're the ones yeah. that always say, also say no quickest, you know? So if we've got a proposal, they're like, no, that doesn't work. Yes, that works. No, you know, I, I feel like a female then goes away takes a lot longer to ponder the idea and do you, do you find that in your world because obviously in the yeah 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 absolutely um so the majority of female-led businesses are purpose-led so they're created because the female has come across a problem that she wants to try and solve something that's happened to her that she doesn't want to happen to anybody else or create a solution to prevent it from even happening in the first place 
Um, and because it's purpose-led, it's absolutely their passion project. So they will do everything in their power to make it a success. Um, that's probably why the vast majority of defaults and CCJs in the UK go to male-led businesses because the females fight harder to keep it going. And obviously, if if there's a situation in the male-led business that means it can't continue, I'm not saying that they're not going to do everything that they could think of to help, to try and save the business, but but the stats speak for themselves. The women-led businesses do not fail as often. Did you hear that, everyone? Listening to this, the female-led businesses do not fail as often. Do you That's... think it's because they don't take as big, I don't know, just playing the devil's advocate, do they not take the bigger risks? Do they stay safe? Um, and then men have a faster failure rate because they take more risk? Is that a thing? Yeah. Um, so some of the stats that we've got access to, um, women tend to want 95% of the answers before they'll make a commitment. Whereas sometimes men can be like, yeah, we'll just do it and I'll worry about it later. Yeah, so it, 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 it's a definite mindset thing with a female-led business. It's a different set of questions. It's a different way to think about putting funding in place. More often than not, a female-led business, there'll be future planning. So they can see something coming six months down the line, think, hang on a minute, how am I going to fund that? Before I place an order for more stock, I need to know I've got the money 100% relied on I'm not going to put anything at jeopardy. Whereas a male-led business could more than likely be, well, I'll buy it anyway and I'll worry about funding it later. And then the panics, like the panic stations, because this stuff's coming, I've got like two weeks to find the money to pay for it. So then that might lead them to panic funding. So it could potentially cost them more. They could have to give more security and it might not be the perfect fit to the business and it'd be a sustainable line of funding. Whereas if a woman's got six months to plan, they know they're going to need to buy this stock. They know they've got like Black Friday sales or seasonal business. They need to increase for Christmas. Start thinking about it in September. Don't think about it on the 1st of December when you already need to have the stuff in your warehouse. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that that's all that kind of planning, um, you know, might happen instinctively for some people. You know, women tend to be recognized as planners, right? Um, you know, they, they have a plan. Um Wow. Give us another one. Give us another case study. What else have you, who else have you helped? Um, there is, um, so my business partner, Martine, she's got a few customers up in the north where she is. Um, we've got uh, another lady in London as well that's looking at stock funding. Um, so one of the clients that Martine's been working for, she has got a dating app. Um, she was the target of someone that was not a desirable person. She went through quite a bad experience on one of the uh, well-known dating apps. Um, so she had a horrific experience. Um, the gentleman on the other end ended up in prison. Um, because of it, it was yeah not a very nice story at all. So she set up a dating app um, with complete protection. So it does all the background checking, it checks the sex offenders register, it does all of the safeguarding issues before you're allowed to join because she didn't want the same thing to happen to her to happen to somebody else. Yes, I remember. Um, again, it's a purpose-led business built to create a solution to a problem that the female business owner has encountered itself. So it's the same story, just a, slight, just a different sector, a different topic. But that's yeah. what we're finding across all of these businesses, purpose-led created to solve a problem because something's happened to them isn't that but that's the definition of an entrepreneur though right um it is sad that these situations have taken place you know in particular for this uh dating app scenario um i met my husband on a dating app and that's how we as in it wasn't like I found my husband on a dating app after we got married. <laughs> we, we met on the dating app, then we got married. Um, yeah. And, you know, and I think, gosh, I, I've been really lucky. I've met friends and I've also met a husband all on the internet. Like I have made, and I've, I've started a business and I've met, made friends and I've found my loved ones and I found my cat all on the internet. Like I think, you know, I, I've been blessed. I don't know how. I've just been really lucky to not have encountered like anything really, really dodgy or dangerous. It has happened. Like there's been things like, I don't know, 
stupid messages or something that's fine you know I feel protected by the screen because I'm like well you can message all you like I'm behind a screen you can't you yeah. can't get me so that's okay but yeah obviously this this person has had such a bad experience but look at what's happened and this is why I say talk about your experiences share them really um voice your opinion because someone else might have been in that situation and actually she's now created a business that is going to save so many women's lives that's amazing Absolutely, yeah, yeah. It's yeah, it's just mind blowing, really. It really yeah. is. It really yeah. is. So, what? Um, when you said I said about a stat earlier, there was a stat about um only thirty five percent of female led businesses get access to finance and and things like that. Why? Why is it like? How, why is that gender creating a disconnect between the money and them getting access to it? I don't. What, what is that? Yeah, I think it's um, because obviously traditionally bank managers have been men in the past, which is fine. Um, there is there is a real lack of women in our industry at, that are doing the physical lending to the businesses. I think it's it's an understanding issue. So if you go and you're pitching for funding to a room full of men, it's intimidating. They're perhaps not going to be as supportive of the journey that the women business owners are on because they haven't been there themselves. Whereas if you pitch into a, a room full of women, more often than not, they're going to have families at home. They're going to understand the journey. They're going to be more responsive to the purpose-led side because they probably have been through something or something similar themselves. It's it's the understanding. Mm. I think I think that's what the issue is. I think there was a report in Forbes recently that said that um, they'd actually discovered that if a male-led business is pitching for investment, it's a different set of questions. Some of them deliberately make it harder for a woman to access the funding that she needs because they don't think she's capable of running the business. And how how can that be in like 2023? How can that be? But only 2% of BC funds go to female-led businesses globally. So 98% to men. Oh, my gosh. Do you know what I've just got? That, that is absolutely appalling. Absolutely appalling. Um, I was just writing down those stats there because I think this is going to be great for later. But um, do you think, uh, and this is a really curveball question out there, but do you think that with the implementation of AI, this, this gender bias might actually disappear it's certainly i think that'll make a difference yeah because quite a lot of the funders they are starting to use ai um some of the well-known funders um are already algorithm based rather than actually sitting down and going through a business plan with somebody so i do think it might start it might start to have an impact i'm excited about that because i know ai is petrifying like literally there are things I went to a conference earlier in the week in Brighton and oh my goodness the stuff that AI can do like especially someone could quite easily clone my voice and say a bunch of gibberish that I did not say and claim it it was me and then create images of me with that kind of um you know with that message it is insane like I love AI when it comes to just speeding things up and making things like a bit neat and tidy but obviously all this cloning stuff is is not great. But how exciting is that concept that potentially applications could be filtered by AI based on the true quality of the answers. There's there's no gender, like we don't put a gender into the machine. We literally have the same set of questions and we have the same assessment for every single one. I can see that working. I can actually see it happening. Yeah, that that would be that would be heading towards the end goal for sure absolutely level in the playing field yes exactly that's what we yeah. need it's, it's that e equal uh fair chance and I, i've been listening um i don't know if you've got your um your copy uh of the book um the 33 laws by uh stephen bartlett you know diary of a ceo he's got like 33 laws um and in one of the because he's got like he, honestly that book is more of a science book than anything else it's jam-packed <laughs> studies and psychology reports I don't know how he does it but there was a study that um, they did a, a trial with men and women and they had to sit a math test and they tried different groups and they said to one group 
oh, by the way, men score higher on these. Like they, they kind of like, uh, they put a seed in their head that really helped them perform badly in the test. Um, because they said, oh, men perform better in this test, by the way, than women. And so women instantly had this like lack of confidence that they weren't even going to do that well. And I feel like that's probably what's happening, do you think, in the, in the applying for funding? Um, you know, they're like, oh, do you know what? Let's just try it, but I ain't going to get it. Yeah, absolutely. I totally agree with that. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah. But it, it, it just, it bothers me because it's not right. It shouldn't be happening, should it? You no. think if, if I went in to pitch for for finance and my husband went in with his business to pitch for finance what makes the people that we're pitching to think that he's better at his job than me just because he's a man yeah it just yeah it it bothers me it does bother of me of course it bothers yeah, yeah. it should bother us and it, it we, you know it does make us angry because I, I started my business speaking about you know money and funding and things like that I started my business with with no money. I, I could I didn't apply for funding. It's not that I was rejected funding, but maybe had I had more confidence in knowing that there was like a better route, I probably would have taken it. I don't know. I mean, I've I've been in financial services for a while, but mostly in the world of mortgages, right? I did. Yeah. I knew I did. I didn't want to um, raise any funds against my house and put my house on the line. Um, I didn't want that kind of risk. It, you know, it was already risk enough. Uh, during the pandemic to start a business and not go for a full-time job with a secure paycheck as they say but um yeah I borrowed my husband's laptop to to I've told the story a million times but yeah, yeah like I just borrowed his laptop and just connected to the internet and was like right I need to make sales and that's how I generated my funds it was like the sale will fund the business so one sale two yeah. sales three that's how I did it yeah that that is classic female founder that is it really yeah, yeah. Use whatever means you can without having to ask for help first. Absolutely. Oh my gosh. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, yeah. yeah so, um, that that offer, the help was there. As in, like, my husband was like, "Don't worry, babe. Like, I've got us." And I was, and as soon as he said that, I was like, "You ain't got me." No. I was like, "No, I need to." And he was like, "Yeah, but I get the babe." He was like, "But just in case it takes a while for you to like build up your fat," I was like, "No, I don't think you know who you're dealing with here." I was, and then that was it, that that fire in my belly where I was like, you know, of course I want my husband to support me. Of course, I'll, I, it's not like I'll reject his help, but it was the feeling of like, ne yeah, I don't know, needing that man to be like, yeah, I just didn't want that. Yeah, and, because, and this is your passion project. So you've got a fire in your belly to make your business a success because it's what you want to do. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so I guess I am, yeah, female founder um, trait. Uh, it is, it, it does feel like that. Um, I've always seen my dad work. I've always seen my mum work. There's always, I don't know where it comes from. Obviously, my, my dad, and I did an episode, if anyone's missed it, I did an episode about my money stories and my money hat. Well, like, where did they come from? Where does, where do I, where does our money blueprint come from? And, you know, my, my dad was the breadwinner, um, in the first 10 years of my life and my brother's life. And then now my mom's got like the most phenomenal career. She's, she's absolutely soaring, you know, once we went to school and yeah, she just picked it up later. So I've always had both, uh, but both people work, you know, both parents work in my family, but I've just got this determined, like hard work ethic in me. I wish I was more smart work and more, risk like I wish I did take like massive I'm talking about massive massive risks like you know let's just throw money into this business oh it didn't work okay well shut it down let's go to the next one but like you say there is a, such an emotional attachment it's, to this it is an emotional attachment yeah it absolutely is and so did your mom start her business after you'd started school uh she yeah she didn't start a business she um was actually a trained hairdresser and then after um, she did that for a bit, she then went to work for a bank, NatWest. And then from NatWest, she then ever, you know, for as long as I can remember, she's been now in recruitment. So not, she's, oh my God, had she started her business in recruitment years ago, the money she would have made, the business she would have built, like insane, because she has built, she has made a lot of other people rich. A lot. That's, again, that's classic female founder traits because... The, put the put the children first in their yeah. early years 
and then go off and look at setting new business up once they're older. So the average age of female entrepreneurs is older than new start male businesses because they're waiting till the children are old enough. They can go to school. They've got a bit more time. They can go and live their dreams and start to fulfill the things they've wanted to do, but they've had to put on hold because yeah, he's at home. Yeah. Yeah, she did do that. She did put it on hold. In fact, she had... Um... But you know what? She says she doesn't regret anything. And every mother will tell you that, yeah. right? Every... Yeah, absolutely. Exactly. Of course, she's never going to be like, oh, yeah, you came way too early. You know, she she doesn't regret it. She had a phenomenal uh, 10 years with two little children and she, she had a lovely life. But yeah, when we moved to the UK from Sicily, we moved here, she picked up her qualification again so she was like well before I got married and moved to Sicily I was uh, you know qualified to be a hairdresser and I never got to do it um so she picked that up got really good at that and then realized um because there was a time when like computers were coming out and she was she did like this part-time again female founder I imagine trait where she worked by day made sure we were tucked up in bed and then she did her course in the evening um to learn how to use a computer bless her yeah yeah Exactly. I mean, I'm I'm living my own female founder mantra. It's my. Tell me, tell me your yours. It's first week of school last week. Um, so I was, I had him in 2019, and then obviously I had a baby in lockdown. I mean, that was not what you want to expect to have to do everything by yourself with no support from your family, um, no visitors or anything. But everyone that had a baby that year was in the same boat. Yeah. So I set up obviously my little boy's at school now so yeah female founder was born went live in may and then i had because i knew he was going to be full time from september so i'd have the extra time when he wasn't in nursery to crack on and get stuff done yeah so i'm living my own female founder mantra as well wow so you started this may 2023 yeah yeah we only went live may 23 yes phenomenal yeah and already you know the, the traction you guys are getting, the the success stories are just phenomenal. No, it's mind blowing. The people that we speak to on a daily basis, um, not just clients, but uh, people in parliament. We've got like the senior, senior people within funders that are offering us bespoke products, uh, cheaper rates because of the less risk. Um, it is, I've, and the imposter syndrome does kick in because um, you sit here and thinking, my oh God, I'm just rocks from Nottingham. What, how how can this have all happened so quickly? And everybody is offering to support me and the groundswell that we've got is so quickly is a really overwhelming. And you do sit at home when obviously little ones are asleep and you sat there thinking, wow, this is really happening and we are really making a difference that I'm just rocks from Nottingham. Like, you know what I mean? <laughs> it, it's, it's, it is really humbling, really humbling. Yeah, we honestly, there, there's not a person that I can think of that would listen to this and think, eh. you know, it's everyone, you know, everyone could literally, you know, get their shields on, get their armor on and be like, where do you want me? I'll, I'll be there. So that's my question to wrap things up because I literally blinked and it's been half an hour. Like, I, I, I can't believe it. It's time has flown. I could talk about this for days. Um, what, how can we help? Who, who, if they're listening, people are listening, saying, "Oh my gosh, I want to be a part of this," or "I am a female founder and I want access to funds." How? What is your closing statement? Like, how can we reach you and how can we help? Yeah, anybody that wants to discuss anything regarding access to finance or equality within business, please reach out to me. Um, you can contact me on email or through LinkedIn. Um, contact at femalefounder.finance. Um, same domain as the website more than happy to speak to anybody that's struggling with raising finance or if, even if you just want to sound ideas off if you've got this idea you think you want to start a business but you don't know where to turn you don't even know if you want to raise finance we're still happy to speak to you education in this is key um, raising awareness of facilities that are out there that are available I had a discussion with um, another client this week actually and her daughter is 16. She knows she wants to start her own business, but she doesn't know how to get going. So I said, I'm more than happy to come and sit down with her for an hour to just go through like a little bit of careers. I mean, I'm not qualified um, to do this at all, um, but it's everything I've learned over 18 years of working in the industry. If someone can benefit that knowledge, 
to help them grow and start a business that's perfect for me incredible that is sensational thank you so much i'm just so honored that you would um you know take your time to share this with our listeners um please if you're listening to this this is the episode i mean they're all amazing but this is the episode to share this is 100 percent the episode to take to your head teachers at schools to your teachers to you know you need to spread this wide into your network where you know if you are running I don't know if you at the weekend maybe you run the uh, female football club you need to share it with them right if you are going to ballet class with your four-year-old you need to share it with them you need to share it with your hairdresser you know the plumber everyone who is in your life you just don't know if they're suffering quietly and might have this passion deep inside of them but they don't know that it's possible they don't know that it's accessible so this is the episode to share with your friends and family all your network um of course connect with roxanne goodman all the uh show notes will have her name and links to her um her channel uh thanks roxanne it's been a real pleasure to see you again yeah but thank you for having me it's lovely to you pleasure. Well. thank you so much thanks everyone for listening and I will see you on the next show.